now ready to begin Monument Designer. Double click Computer, or if you have to, go to Start and click Computer. Double click the CD icon. Double click Monument Designer folder. Double click Gray Granite. You can start with any color, but for the tutorial that's uh, in the Acrobat document and for this video, we'll work with the gray granite. Double click Gray Main Page. This is a large file, so you may have to wait just a minute. Once your Monument Designer file is open, you're ready to begin. Simply click a shape to begin with onto the screen. Click and drag a corner handle to enlarge the monument. If you use a side handle, it'll stretch the monument. If you ever make a mistake, just click Control Z or you can go to Edit and Undo. There's also an undo button here at the top. This may be helpful if you want to ever ungroup a monument. Now you can work with individual pieces, the die and the base. Monuments and bases both may be stretched. Here I'll click undo, undo, and undo. Now, my monument and my base are a group again, just like they were when I started. Clicking and dragging a corner handle, I'll enlarge it a little more. Then I'll bring on a carving. This is your zoom tool. You can zoom in on parts of the page by clicking and dragging and then I'll zoom into those pieces. You can see here that we've used a 5031 rows. These are components from DMARC Disk 3, now call, called Classic Components. To zoom back out, just right-click the Zoom tool. To copy this cross and grape configuration, just click Copy, Edit, Copy. Edit, Paste puts a duplicate right on top. Pressing your Control key, and clicking and dragging the carving over keeps it in a straight line. If you reduce, if you release the control key, it'll move in any direction. If you keep the control key down, it'll keep it in a straight line. Move it to the other side. Then click the mirror button shown here. Now hold down the shift key and click the other carving on the left. They're both selected. Click arrange group. This groups the two carvings together so that now we can center this group of carvings on the monument. Hold down your shift key and click the monument. Arrange, align and distribute, and align centers vertically. This centered the group of two carvings on the die. Now let's add a name panel. Click and drag a name, place it on the monument, and again, grab a corner handle. That enlarges the family name panel. Let's undo that, and I'll show you something else. Hold down your shift key and grab the corner handle, and you'll notice that it goes out left and right. Let's align that panel and the name on the monument so that we know it's in the middle. Since this is already selected, hold down your shift key and click the monument. Go to arrange, align and distribute, and align, to align centers vertically. You may also simply hit the C key. Now we know that the panel is in the middle of the monument. Let's get a, um, an inscription panel.
So I can drag a panel onto the monument. So I can drag a corner handle to make it larger. You don't want to grab a top one. Or side one, top one. But you do want to use the corner ones. And let's put an emblem in the middle. Maybe make that a little larger. Let's copy this inscription panel and paste another one. And hold click and then hold down the control key as you drag across. To be sure these are in the middle, hold down your shift key and click the other panel. Now let's make a group out of that. Arrange group. Now hold down your shift key again and click the monument. Release the shift key. Arrange, align and distribute, and align centers vertically. Now we know that that group of two panels is in the middle of the monument. Click in some white space to clear your selection. Let's ungroup these panels so we can begin to work on the lettering. Click here, arrange, ungroup. That ungroups the monument, the uh, ungroups the panels. Now click on one panel, click on arrange, and ungroup. This ungroups the text from the panel. If you don't ungroup the text from the panel, you won't be able to type. Click in the monument or in some white space to clear your selection. Now click on the name. Now click on the text tool. Now click and drag across the name. Be sure you put the caps lock on since there are no lowercase modified Roman letters. Notice here you're typing in modified Roman. Be sure that caps lock is on and type the name that you'd like to appear in the panel. Now, click and drag across the date of birth. You would enter a name, a date of death, the same way. To zoom in, just click and drag a box around the thing you'd like to look at. I'm going to zoom in on the family name. Click on your text tool. And clicking on the family name, you'll notice that these are not square handles around. That's just because we hadn't ungrouped that yet. But it'll work all the same. This is still grouped, so if you move it, it'll all go together. You can add kerning to the name by clicking on the Shape tool, clicking on the name. You can adjust kerning by ungrouping the name from the panel. Simply click the Name panel. The text is also selected. You can see by the little handles here. Click Arrange and Ungroup. Click in some white space to clear your selection. Now, click on your shape tool. Click on the name. You'll notice that there are handles as well as an arrow down here. If you click on this arrow at the bottom right, it'll add a little bit of space between these letters. That adjusts the kerning. You can also click and drag to add kerning. You can also bring in the width of the name panel by clicking on your pick tool, clicking on the panel, clicking on a side handle, holding the shift key, and dragging, clicking, and dragging in the sides. It's moving in from the right and the left at the same time. Now let's zoom out. Our monument's done. Let's add some bases 